All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Kerbaloons, which is being made by forum user Joe Patrick one and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, balloons, which your Kerbals can use. And not just any balloons, but they are very much akin to these sort of real-world weather balloons that we use here on Earth to conduct scientific experiments all the time. And I just love that idea of having weather balloons in Kerbal Space Program. It gives us another way to fly through the air exploring this beautiful world. Instead of just rockets and space planes, we now can also launch weather balloons. And well, that's just great. And this is actually a mod that I've had my eye on for quite a while now. Uh, but the first release, I thought, wasn't quite there yet to what I really wanted to see. But this recent release, which will be a couple days old by the time you guys see the video, really brings in a lot more into the mod that I am just... I've, I've fallen in love with. And it's very cool, so let's jump right on into the VAB and have a gander at the parts that make this possible. Now, where you will find these parts is a little bit strange in my opinion. They're all in science, which I'm gonna admit here, I don't know why I find this strange. They are weather balloons, effectively, so it kind of makes sense to have them in science. But at the same time, I kind of think that they should be in pods because if we take a look at the first one here, you'll notice they are unmanned command pods, which is quite cool. So you don't have to worry about grabbing a probe core for any of your scientific missions. You can just grab one of these curb balloons and you are good to go. Now you'll notice that all of these curb balloons that we have here in the science tab are in varying colors. And these colors denote the size of the balloon. So the sort of rust color here is uh, curb balloons that are within the 0.625 meter range. The green is the 1.25 meter range. The uh, blue here is 2.5 meters and the purple is 3.75 meters. So these can get up from very, very tiny balloons to very, very massive balloons. And then what you have is each size is split into three lift slash altitude variations. So we have here first the heavy payload version. Now this balloon is meant to carry as much of a payload as possible up into the air. Then next we have the high altitude version, which is meant to carry a small payload very, very far up into the air. And then finally we have the standard balloon, which is a middle ground between these two. It's not going to carry quite as much as the heavy payload balloon, but it's also not going to go quite as high as the high altitude. So whatever the purpose of your mission is, you can choose the correct size and also payload slash altitude variety that you need. So if it's a small experiment that just needs to go really high into the atmosphere, boom, go with the high altitude. If you're wanting to try and launch a rocket from up in the, uh, well, upper atmosphere, you're going to want to go for the heavy payload version. And, um... Yeah, launching a rocket from a balloon is is possible. We're, we're going to take a look at that later. It's really fun to do. But yes, I, I'm just loving these. So let's take a bit more of a look at the stats on them. You'll notice we have three things here of importance. Of course, the top being the uh, unmanned command pod portion, which the 36 electric charge per hour usage. And it does have a small battery of 10 electric charge down here. But these balloons, depending on how heavy your payload is, may or may not be up in the air for very long. So uh, this may or may not last you the amount of time you need. You may need to slap a battery or two on there. Now this middle bit here is the sort of stats about the altitude of the balloon and the, well, not the altitude, the uh, minimum capabilities of pressure uh, and the lift capabilities of it. Uh, so right here we have the min and max pressure. So for this small little 0.625 meter heavy payload one has a minimum pressure of 16 kilopascals and a max pressure of 102 kilopascals and a max lift of 16.9 kilonewtons, which is a pretty decent little lift for a very tiny little balloon. But what's most important here 
is the max payload. And in fact, when I go through the rest of these, I'm just gonna mention the max payload because quite frankly, even though some of you out there will really care about the min-max pressure stuff, I think the majority of you are just gonna care about how much can this balloon lift. So the max payload on this version, the heavy payload, 0.625 meter, at maximum pressure is 1.722 tons. At minimum pressure, 1.325 tons. So that is quite important. It is varying, so at the maximum pressure of the ship, it can lift a lot more, but when you get up to minimum or lower pressures, you're not gonna be able to lift quite as much, so you're gonna start to sink back down if you're too heavy. Now in the next, the high altitude version of the 0.625, our max pressure lift is 0.927 tons and minimum pressure lift at 0.713 tons. Did I say min pressure here or max? But yes, max pressure 0.927 and min pressure at 0.713 tons. So again, not as much carry capacity as the heavy payload, but it will go much, much higher into the atmosphere. And the standard version is the middle ground. At a maximum pressure, it can hold 1.325 tons, and at a minimum pressure, 1.019 tons. So still pretty competent. It can hold quite a bit of stuff, but at the 0.625 meters, actually, now that I think about that, that's a fairly large amount of weight for the 0.625 meter range. Huh, all right. Now the next size up is the 1.25 meter. So for the 1.25 heavy payload, it has a max payload at maximum pressure of 9.276 tons, min pressure of 7.135 tons. Now the high altitude version, it is 4.99 tons and 3.843 tons at min. Then the standard version, I'm gonna try and go through these a bit more quickly here, folks. At uh, the uh, max payload for the standard version is 7.135 tons at max pressure, and min pressure 5.484 tons. Now, once we get up to the 2.5 meter variety, we start being able to carry a crap load of tonnage. You'll notice it went up a fairly large amount from, say for the heavy payload, from 1.7 tons to 9.2 tons, now at 2.5 meters, we're at 25.8 tons max pressure and 19.87 min pressure tons for the 2.5 meter. Now for the high altitude version, 13.9 tons at max and min pressure 10.7 tons. And then the standard version in the middle there at 19.87 tons at max pressure and 15.29 tons at min pressure. And then we jump even more into the tonnage area. Well, that was a weird way to phrase that, but yes, 3.75 meter heavy payload version, 51.68 tons at max pressure, 39.75 tons at min pressure. And then the high altitude version, 27.828 tons at max and 21.4 tons at min. And for the standard, it is 39.75 tons at max and 30.58 tons at min. And that's pretty freaking awesome. With the 3.75 meter balloon, say the max payload version, you could carry a very large craft up into the upper atmosphere and then launch it into space. This is why I mentioned that earlier. You could theoretically build a rocket, strap some balloons to it, and then launch it from higher up in the air. And that's wonderful. Oh, so wonderful. Uh, but yes, let us actually take a look at a couple of balloons that I built earlier. So we'll look at the standard Kerr balloon first, load this up. It's a pretty small little thing. It is the standard 1.25 meter Kerr balloon. And one thing to notice is it's a very small probe. In fact, the total weight of this is 0.3 tons. Remember, the standard version, at minimum pressure, can lift 5.48 tons. Now what this is going to do when we launch it, because that's what we're going to do, is our balloon is going to shoot up into the upper atmosphere like a rocket. Because we're so light, this balloon is basically just going to go haywire and take us into the air very, very quickly. The sort of point of these balloons is to build whatever craft you have attached to the balloon really at around 
the minimum pressure tonnage, because otherwise it's going to do this. If we inflate our balloon, there it goes, and there we go. We're already getting the high speed wind effects, and we're up to 345 meters per second, over 350 now, and notice that the balloon is getting bigger. That is important because, again, remember, these are very much akin to real-world weather balloons. So as weather balloons go higher into the air, the balloon expands and loses lift, and when the pressure becomes too low... Wait for it. Wait for it. Pop! There we go. The balloon pops. Once it gets too high up into the atmosphere, because there's just not enough pressure, it goes boom, and our whole payload will... <laughs> gently fall down to Earth, though at the speeds we were going, it's gonna fly for quite a while here. <laughs> yeah, so that is what I wanted to show you on that. Uh, one, of course, the expansion. Again, it's quite cool. Works very similar to real-world weather balloons. The balloon will expand as air pressure decreases, which as altitude increases, and will then lose lift as you go higher. And then when the pressure is too low, boom, the balloon pops, and your payload, well, should theoretically drop back down to Earth. So let's revert flight and go to the vehicle assembly building. And like I said, the tonnage is quite important. So these numbers here aren't really just the maximum that you can hold in the balloon. It really should be a goal for you to achieve. And what I've found in playing with these balloons so far is you should build your craft at just below the minimum pressure tonnage. So for this 1.25 meter standard balloon, I should have a craft at around 5 tons, probably. This is 0.3. So that is why it shot way up into the air really, really quickly. Now, I was also going to show you a high altitude variation of it, but it has that same body. So it's going to do that exact same thing of just shooting up into the air, which I don't think is quite as fun. So what we're going to do is look at the heavy payload version here. And we're going to start looking at this one. Heavy One. Now this lovely balloon here is at the higher end of the max pressure. So at max pressure, this balloon could hold 9.276 tons. Our craft is at 8.7 tons. So it's in between our min and max pressure, which will allow us to lift this thing up into the air, but not for long. So if we go to launch here, Oh, and also I should point out, it can't stage. You actually have to either uh, set it to an action group or right click and hit inflate balloon. As you'll notice, our only thing in our uh, little sequence here is this engine. But yes, if we inflate our balloon, there we go. Notice how we're not flying off the platform like we did in the previous one. We are slowly raising up into the air and you know, just gently sort of going up into the sky, which really is what you should be doing with a weather balloon. <laughs> weather balloons really aren't supposed to work like our previous flight, where it's shooting up like a frickin' rocket. No, no, we should be going slowly but surely up into the air. But here's where we start having the issue with this one, because it's not, it's not as heavy as the maximum payload, but it is heavier than the minimum pressure payload, this balloon is going to eventually reach a height where it can't go up anymore, and it will actually start to fall back down to terra firma. And so this is uh, something about that you need to remember with the design of your balloons. Let's actually speed up physics here for a moment. Go. Yes, 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 I know, just speed up. There we go. Should be coming up soon. You notice we are inflating the balloon quite nicely. Excellent. And... I really probably should have remembered at what altitude that this happened at. <laughs> okay, back to time warp. Ah, so how are all of you today? Enjoying the balloons, hopefully. 
I do love how they expand the higher up we do go, but you'll notice our speed is slowing down now. We're almost down to 20 meters per second, now almost to 15 meters per second, which means we're starting to slow down in our altitude, and eventually we're actually going to start going down. So this is because this is too heavy to get up to higher altitudes. The pressure is getting into such a way in the upper atmosphere that the balloon just isn't functioning anymore. So you'll notice now we are losing altitude. And that is because of the weight of this thing. It's in between the min and max pressure. So you really want to design your balloons once again to just below the minimum pressure tonnage. So if we revert flight back to the vehicle assembly building and load up another one of these that I made, heavy two, this one is in fact just below the minimum tonnage. So it's still got a nice bit of fuel, nice little rocket here, and you know, some uh, nice things. What exactly is our tonnage on that one? You know what, four? Why don't we actually add Actually, I meant to do this earlier. Let's add a little SAS to it as well. That'll still keep us under in our tonnage. Save and go to launch. And what this one should do is go up to the maximum altitude that this balloon can go to. And then once it does pop, we then have a rocket that we can launch from the bottom of it. And who doesn't love that? So you notice we are taking off pretty quickly, but not nearly as quickly as the first flight where we just shot up. It's at a much more reasonable pace, and we will start going higher and higher into the atmosphere, though at a much slower pace, but we will do it better than the previous flight where we were just too darn heavy. So let's actually fast forward again. Yes, I really just need to click this. Don't show again. Beautiful. Oh, oh the physics did go wonky. Let's revert that to launch and maybe not go 4x time warp. You know, that warning is there for a reason, folks, that you shouldn't go beyond 2x. <laughs> I decided to risk it, and it was a bad, bad choice. But, yeah, what are you going to do? It was entertaining at the very least. So let's just do 2x then and wait for this to go up into the air and watch as this balloon beautifully expands. I really do love that it does that. That is a very, very nice little touch from the mod maker. And, boop, getting even bigger. Let's actually throttle this baby all the way up and turn on our SAS for uh, when we do have the balloon pop so that we can just launch the rocket and continue on our merry way. Now we just have to wait. The waiting game. Always, oh, there we go. And spacebar, excellent, and we now have launched a rocket from over 10 kilometers in the air. And that is one of the fun things you can do with this. Sure, you can set up a you know typical weather balloon with scientific packages, as I actually do have in here. This uh, service bay is indeed full of different science equipment. Uh, and yeah, you can send up those balloons to do their sciency things around the world, or you could launch a rocket from in the air. And that's just wonderful. I mean, we just launched straight up. And with this, if we... Oh, God, no, I didn't mean to do that. If we go to the map, we could have easily gotten this thing into an elliptical orbit if we would have wanted to try. But instead, it's up to... Oh, boy. Oh, almost a... Oh, boy, almost a half a million meters there. That is lovely. So a quite a nice, fun, cheap, potentially, way of launching your rockets into space using balloons. And that, that is just cool. It's another fun alternative to what you can do in this game, how you can play with things. And it's just a lot of fun. So yes, if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always. And if you build any crazy, fun, weird Kerr Balloon creations, I would love to see them. So tweet them to me, Facebook, etc. I would quite enjoy seeing those. Uh, but yes, that is going to be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, that you do come back for the next. But until then... Thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one. Now let's log some data. Oh, oh, hold on. Gotta actually highlight the data. Log pressure. Nothing. <laughs> All right, later, folks.